we have a lot of conversation in the culture right now about protein and how much protein and what should women do to get more protein and what about postmenopausal women should they be doing protein like the protein conversation has been cracked open and it's a little bit of the wild wild west out there So what I really want to do in this video is talk about making sure that you are choosing a protein that supports your health, that slows down aging. And, and it, it's a very simple concept that I think at the end of the video you will really know how to master. Before I dive into that, I do want to say, especially for my menopausal friends out there, that I am a fan of protein. Um, I am a fan of the one gram of protein for every pound of ideal body weight. I think that is a great formula. The research is, is very clear on that. Um, and so if you are you know, in those postmenopausal years and you're noticing you're losing muscle, um, and you're trying to build up your strength and vitality, I really encourage you first, before you go into the, what I'm about to teach you, I really encourage you first to think about making sure you're getting enough protein. Um, and those of you that are plant-based, same thing. We wanna make sure that you're getting enough protein. And if you don't feel like you're getting enough protein, I always recommend the addition of an amino acid supplement. With that in mind, how do you make sure that it supports a healthy body? And I call it eating clean protein. So just like we've been having this beautiful conversation in the culture of, oh, wait, over, I mean, this has been like the last 20, 30 years, hopefully you've heard this, that not all fat is equal. We've said, oh wait, fat is good because we have good fat, but the bad fat is not good. So we've separated out this macronutrient and we've said good fat, bad fat. And now in conversation, we don't just throw fat out there. In Eat Like a Girl, I'm really trying to introduce this concept that there is good carbohydrates and there are bad carbohydrates. I call them nature's carbs and human made carbs. For the sake of this video, I really want to emphasize that there are clean proteins and there are dirty proteins. And dirty proteins are, are meat specifically that are factory farmed meat. So one of the challenges with factory farmed meat is that they are inflammatory. So think about this for a moment, and I'm sure all my uh, plant-based friends have left this video um, and you know, know that there are plenty of, there's plenty of protein in plants. You just have to really look at diversifying those sources so you get all those amino acids. For, for those of you that are omnivores and you eat meat, I really want you to start to look through this lens of what, is this animal I'm about to eat, was it um, raised in a factory or was it allowed to graze in a pasture? Because that makes a difference. Factory farmed meat have this inflammatory component to it because, check this out, it's a great, great phrase I highly recommend you keep in your mind, which is whenever you are eating meat, you are eating what that animal ate. So you are what the animal that you eat, what they ate goes into you. So you always want to be thinking like, what did that animal eat? And a lot of these animals in a factory farm are fed a lot of grains and they're fed, fed genetically modified pesticide sprayed grains. And they're fed that, and a lot of them are injected with growth hormone and things like that to plump them up so there's more meat. And so when you're ordering this conventional style meat or at a restaurant, or you're getting it at your grocery store, you are literally getting a package of toxins that is creating an inflammatory response in your body. I have seen this in our community on continuous glucose monitors. It fascinates me how you can see protein really spike someone's blood sugar if it is a factory farmed animal. Whereas then I can give a, a somebody grass-fed meat and they don't spike their blood sugar at all. And that factory farmed meat is actually inundated with omega-3 fatty acids. So, so much to talk about just in the benefits of, 
uh, no, of more of a grass-fed approach to the animals that you are eating. Now, there are some interesting studies on this, and I want to point them out to you, and I'll leave the links in the notes. But uh, there was a 2023, this one I found really the most interesting to bring to you, is that there was a 2023 comparison of grass-fed and factory farmed beef. And so they found that the factory farm, also known as conventional beef, contained higher levels of long chain polyunsaturated fats. Um, the same info, check this out, that is the same inflammatory fat that you find in vegetable oil. So those of you that are out there like, I don't eat bad fats, I don't eat vegetable oil, I know it's inflammatory, my next question to you would be, well, but do you eat factory farmed meat? Because if you do, this uh, 2023 uh, comparison is sh of these two types of meat is showing that that's inflammatory. So when you are eating, just so you're, we're all really clear, when you are eating these uh, grass-fed animals, you actually are getting a, a huge benefit. You're not only getting the amino acid punch, you can get the am amino acid punch from the factory farm, but you're also getting an incredible increase in omega-3s, which is really powerful. You are getting also anti-inflammatory nu nutrients like butyrate and B vitamins. So it's a more nutrient dense meat. So we want to avoid the factory farmed um, so that we can not create that inflammatory response. But we also want to lean into these grass fed animals so we can get the added nutrient punch that they deliver along with the amino acid profile. You want to know the foods that will support hormones? Guess what? I have them for you already. It's a free giveaway. Just click the link below and I'll send you a list of all the foods that support amazing hormonal health. Now, the second thing, and this is something I really, I hope you all know, but if you don't, it's really important um, that we talk about it. And that's that factory farm meat ha is, has more antibiotic resistance in it. It can create this, these residues of antibiotics are in them and they can destroy your gut microbiome. They can lead to the antibiotic resistance that the world has seen when we started to kill bugs with antibiotics in our foods and we were taking antibiotics all the time and we were putting antibacterial cleansers on our hands and in our mouth. The name of the health game is not just to kill every single bug in your body. But when you eat a factory farm meat that has been completely inundated with antibiotics, what you're getting is you're getting those antibiotics into you. So those of you that are like, I don't, I don't eat, I don't eat, uh, I don't take antibiotics. I know they're bad. Well, are you eating meat, conventional factory farm meat with antibiotics in them? Because you're also destroying your gut if you're doing that over and over and over again. And what was interesting, there was a study, a 2021 study that found 95.4% of factory farm beef and lamb contained residual antibiotics in them. And that they, there were, they went on to look at other studies and there was a 2023 study that found that meat treated with antibiotics often transmits uh, this um, antibiotic resistant bacteria that can disrupt your gut microbiome. So, Again, when we're looking at longevity, we, we can't just turn away and say meat is bad and that it's gonna speed up aging. We have to take meat and say there is bad meat and there is good meat. And factory farm conventional is the bad. It is creating inflammation. It is destroying your gut microbiome. And when we look at this regenerative approach to pasture, raised meat and animals, we have the added nutrients. We don't get all that inflammation. We don't get all that antibiotic residual. And we have the added nutrients, not to mention the big punch of fatty acids like omega-3s that can really lower inflammation, which is so interesting because when we say protein, I mean, let's go back to the cultural zeitgeist right now, which is one gram of protein for every pound of ideal body weight you want to be. That is, the, that is the, the general rule at this moment. But what we need to go into is a deeper conversation that it's not just the amount of protein that will determine your health, it is the type of protein. 
And when we're doing this factory farm, you're getting such a, a there's not there's not a win there. You're getting such a, a, a negative response in the body. But if we just change the conversation to pasture raised, uh, we can actually start to look at meat as more of a health fit. So I hope that helps. Let me put it in the comments if that's the first time you've heard this. Um, those of you who have pre-ordered Eat Like a Girl, thank you. Um, put in the comments if you've pre-ordered it. Uh, I have so much on protein here. I have some incredibly delicious recipes that Chef Jeff made, um, who was former owner of the Valencia Gold Hotel. My celebrity chefs created some incredible recipes. Um, and we really dialed in protein. You know, as a team between me and Chef Le Leslie, who did the plant-based recipes, and Chef Jeff, who did the omnivore ones, we really sat and talked about principles like the one I'm teaching you right now and how to bring you recipes that were supportive of your health and didn't fall prey to just saying, here's protein. Um, and so we need to have a deeper conversation if you're going to use protein as a health tool. So as always, I hope that helps. Put in the comments if, if this was a great educational tool for you. I do these videos for you all. I love your comments, by the way, so thank you. For those of you who keep coming back and commenting, thank you for those of you who um, have pre-ordered Eat Like a Girl, and let's just, let's all get healthy together. So I hope that helps. Okay, if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out the next video of my food series. I, on this video, wanna talk about the healthy foods that you might be eating that will stop you from a long and healthy life.